All right, so uh, let's talk about a sort of less happy moment in uh, in recent space flight. Yes, yes. So back on like more current events. So mm. I want to talk about the uh, CRS seven commercial resupply seven. Uh, Resupply Mission 7 for SpaceX. Mm. Uh, so this was uh, one of an ongoing series of missions by SpaceX to deliver cargo and food and you know instruments and stuff like that to the space station on the Falcon 9 rocket. Mm -hmm. um, this is part of the uh, commercial resupply mission uh, uh, contract along with Orbital Sciences. Uh, and it was you know a pretty important launch because mm. uh, the ISS cargo vehicles had been having a little bit of bad luck. Mm -hmm. uh, if you remember last year, uh, November, mm. uh, it was orbital scientists and Tari's vehicle suffered mm. a, uh, a failure, um, to put it lightly, yeah. uh, shortly after taking off, you know, dramatic first stage failure right over the launch pad, causing a lot of damage to the pad. Yeah. Uh, so that, you know, they lost a bunch of cargo and stuff for that. Mm. Uh, then a couple months later, the prog Russian progress vehicle launched. And shortly after separating from the third stage, mm. the uh, progress vehicle was observed to be tumbling out of control they never quite regained control of it and mm. it eventually re-entered so at this point you know on one level you know iss is prepared for this they've got mm. stockpiles they've got plans another level oh man <laughs> it's two in a row this is starting to be trouble yeah so enter crs7 launching on june 28th this is 2015 uh and <laughs> What's especially made it interesting for me was this is actually right after the Otakon pre-screenings the day after. Ah. So I, I was at uh, you know my friend's house with a bunch of people there, and I was like, all right, guys, we're all going to get up early and watch CRS-7 <laughs> launch and put it on this great big giant projector. Uh, we're watching, and like it's you know going, everything's going fine. Uh, and right around when I expect to see stage separation, I see a big plume. Mm. Oh, like and I'm like usually I'm like ah. Oh. Oh wait, no, it's just stage step. Don't worry about it. <laughs> then I see the plume continue. Like oh, oh, no. I was like burst out. Like oh no, and they're like everyone's like what? And like ten <laughs> seconds later, the whole thing just comes apart and the oh, camera pans away. Yeah. So if you were watching, you would have just seen a white plume, uh, mm. an apparent explosion, and a whole lot of you know pieces flying around. <sighs> yeah. So what ended up happening? It was mm. uh, shortly afterwards. They were pretty sure, it, and it later confirmed. It was the second stage oxygen tank. So, you know, hmm. Falcon 9 is uh, composed of two stages. The first stage is most of the rocket. Second stage is a smaller upper part. Mm -hmm. uh, each one has a tank of um, uh, kerosene for the fuel and oxidize, uh, oxygen for the oxidizer. Because mm. uh, if you're in space, you don't have any oxygen, so you got to bring your own. Uh, and it appeared that the second stage oxygen tank had burst for unknown mm. reasons. Uh, and what's kind of amazing about it is the stage burst... Dragon fell off. You could just see it tumbling mm. away, uh, apparently intact. You can actually even see the IDA ring, the International Docking Adapter, wow. which is another p important piece of cargo that was going to mm. be brought up there. You could see that flying away. Uh, and then the first stage just kind of keeps on trucking for like mm. eight seconds. You can wow. see the engines on. Everything's going great. Mm -hmm. And eventually, you know, it wasn't designed to have this ragged chunk of metal in mm. the front, uh, and aerodynamic forces eventually got the better of it, and just kind of zippered down, and uh, mm. I believe the euphemism is rapid, unscheduled disassembly. <laughs> <laughs> so it did not yeah. blow up. It mm. more like part of it popped like a balloon, mm. and then, you know, imagine holding, like, a paper airplane out the window on a highway. You know, mm. it's not going to go so great. So <laughs> it got torn apart. Um, you know, in the end, no one was hurt. Uh, mm. But we did lose a lot of cargo. Uh, this was the third mission in a row. Ugh. ISS guys uh, clearly, like, you can kind of hear in their voice, like, ha ha, like, <laughs> getting, a little, getting a little close here. Uh, they lost um, a, a spacesuit that was hoping, hoping to get Ooh. up there, mm. a water filtration system that Ooh. they actually sent, originally tried to set up on the Antares with orbital sciences. Mm. So this was the replacement. Oh. And since that failed, they had to Oof. actually go b b uh, build a whole new one from scratch. Mm. Uh, several CubeSats, including uh, a bunch of student program uh, right, right. experiments oh. that had also been on the Atari's flight. So, yeah. you know, they were like, oh, well, I guess these students are learning a hard lesson when <laughs> space flight is hard. The rocket um, ate my homework. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, and the one that, the thing that really killed me about it was Dragon was intact all the way to the water. Mm. They were communicating wow. with it. Because uh, the thing is, it didn't blow up. It just fell yeah. off. Uh, but they didn't have... Uh, the software to pop the parachutes. It just ah. wasn't a, 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 a scenario they really envisioned. Because yeah. I think the idea was, you know, this isn't going to be manned, so it's not that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. And also, if we're even thinking about this, the vehicle probably didn't survive anyway. Yeah. But, you know, Elon has mentioned that they will be updating the software to handle just <laughs> such a sure. scenario. Because, <laughs> like, 
I just keep thinking, like, if they had recovered the oh, cargo... That, that would have been... Saved them a lot of time and effort. Yeah. Yes, and it also would have kind of, like... I think it would have been a really cool moment from SpaceX and really yeah. differentiate them. Just be like, look, we lost our launch vehicle. No big deal. We got your cargo right here. And we'll just put it right on top of another one, and off we go again. Yeah. Uh, so... You know, hopefully we don't need to see that again, mm. but that will, you know, that, that option will be available next time. Yeah. Uh, so as to what happened, which mm. uh, they did eventually release uh, a press release saying this is what their most likely candidate was. Um, so the way that rockets work is inside the liquid oxygen tank, they're generally, you know, this varies from rocket to rocket, mm. but they have to, as they use up the fuel and oxygen, they have to keep the pressure up to keep basically push uh. the stuff, keep it down the bottom and, sure. you know, keep the tank, uh, you know, structurally intact. And so what they usually do is they have extremely high pressure helium uh, kept mm. in these, you know, on, on ver some vehicles it's aluminum. On uh, SpaceX it happens to be composite. I think they're, mm. they're called COPV, composite overwrap pressure vessels. Mm. Um, and a lot of people at first were like, oh, man, is it going to be that helium? Because they've had mm. a lot of issues with helium over the years because helium is a real difficult gas to work with. And the composite stuff they're trying to do is really light but also really mm. finicky. Uh, what ended up actually happening was they keep these tanks, which are fairly sizable and under, mm. like, something crazy, like three or four three or four thousand psi wow they keep it at the bottom of the oxygen tank to help keep it cool and mm. they're held in with these big struts that attach it to the side of mm. the inside of the tank uh and one of these struts apparently failed which mm. allowed the uh, helium tank to wrench itself free Ooh. Loose which ma made a big hole in it and then also go Foop! and smash Oof. into the top of the tank mm. so all of a sudden you got a lot more helium in here the relief valve is overwhelmed the whole thing pops like a balloon and the rest is history mm. gotcha. um you know, the best they could do was, uh, you know, that was like their best estimate for what could have happened. So mm. they went and tested some of the struts they still had, mm. and they failed at like 20% of what the rated strength Whoa. was. Yeah. Hmm. And, you know, rated strength should still be pretty well clear of yeah. like failure strength. <laughs> right. So they were like, all right, well, and they, they said something like, you know, we're not going to name the supplier, but <laughs> we're getting a new supplier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, How good is their insurance? <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and actually, you know, you mentioned launch insurance is a thing, but this was not a NASA flight. So, you know, they yeah. did not, they, NASA doesn't get insurance. So that, mm. that, that, was, that was a pretty nasty hit. Uh, oh. But yeah, it's just, it's also kind of an interesting scenario because some people will say, you know, this is the contractor's fault for showing mm. up, giving in, uh, you know, inadequate struts that weren't up to mm -hmm. snuff and other people say well you know spacex should be testing this and it's like well mm -hmm. should they be testing literally every component right of yeah yeah, yeah. If, if, they, point, you should if be the manufacturer says that that it's rated for that how much faith can they put in the yeah 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 and i mean this is part of the reason why spacex builds so much stuff in-house because they don't mm -hmm. trust anyone and everyone else does it more expensive than them because spacex <laughs> is crazy but, yeah <laughs> so in the end, hopefully it'll be just kind of an interesting blip. I mean, it was mm -hmm. like, it was the 19th, I believe, flight of the Falcon 9. Uh, it was uh, the, you know, like, there's like 20 or 21 successful flights in a row. Still a pre uh, for SpaceX in general, including mm -hmm. the last two of the Falcon 1. A pretty great track record for a new company yeah. and a new vehicle. Uh, and, you know, in the end, you know, they're hopefully going to be returning to flight later this year. No one's really sure exactly when they're going to be doing it or who's going to get the hot seat mm -hmm. on that one. Uh, it'll especially be interesting because there are rumors going around that they're going to be trying to upgrade the vehicle again. So not only are you coming back to flight after a uh, disaster, you're also mm. going to be trying new changes because that's just how SpaceX rolls, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's just I, I, I actually find stuff like this really interesting because yeah. it's a bummer, but you end up getting so much useful data. And people, I heard saw a quote out there somewhere saying, you know, SpaceX learned probably learned more from this one failure than from mm. the last ten successful missions. Right, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Now, do they know why that particular failure caused the dragon to separate as opposed to be, you know, caught up in the uh, uh, the, <laughs> the disaster, for lack of a better term? So I think separate is a strong word for what uh, happened. <laughs> yeah. I think it was more like the surface it was attached to was oh. suddenly gone. It just okay, kind yeah. of popped. And so it just kind of fell off. Mm. Um, but you also got to keep in mind, like, even if it had stayed on, the event looks really violent because they're going a couple of times the speed of sound. There's a lot of pressurized oxygen being released, but it actually wasn't that bad. Nothing mm -hmm. blew up, nothing mm -hmm. detonated. It just kind of, you know, like rapid unscheduled disassembly is actually a pretty good term for what's mm -hmm. happening there. You know, people have talked about, you know, I, I always kind of correct people on stuff like this saying, like, you know, the rocket didn't blow up. And I should right. say, you want to see a rocket blow up? <laughs> oh. look, at this, look, look at this Delta II explosion. Right. <laughs> like, you know, when rockets blow up, you know it. Like, mm -hmm. this is, uh, you know, this is, a, it's, a lot more like I also I also compare it to like um, 
think of like the pod racer crashes you know it's tumbling yeah. there's pieces flying everywhere but they don't really blow up that's a mm -hmm. lot kind of what's happening they're just tumbling through the atmosphere mm -hmm. so yeah like rock on dragon it's just no like kidding you know just like no problem just like <laughs> i said you know if people have been on board that one despite the lack of an mm -hmm. abort system they would have been totally fine they would have been wow. you know talking about it over beers that night because they would have <laughs> you know it's been like well that was a weird bump and then they would have hit the parachutes and mm -hmm. landed in the ocean and been recovered yeah so Lots Amazing. of lessons to be learned from this mission. Really interesting stuff, and hopefully they'll be getting back to flight pretty soon here. Yeah, definitely. So, so supply wise, uh, uh, who covers that kind of stuff? I mean, is are they going to have to? I mean, do they have stockpiles of this, yeah. or is this? <laughs> so, if you look at footage on the space station, you'll notice a lot of stuff lying around. Especially mm -hmm. whenever they go flying through the nodes, you'll see lots of bags of water, and you know they can recycle water. Uh, they've got lots of like dry food, like you know, not always the nice stuff, but you know mm. they got supplies. Uh, and a progress vehicle did eventually succeed, and they got up there and su resupplied it. And and at Japanese HTV, I believe, is mm. docking like tomorrow, mm. uh, and oh, so wow. that's going to carry right. a whole bunch of stuff as well. Um, so that'd be pretty good. And then you know, so at that point they'd be re rebuilding the stockpile. I think you know they're in a good place now, but they definitely are looking to rebuild that stockpile if possible. Mm. They're already talking about. Uh, you know, extending the mission number of missions they're going to have under this contract before the next mm. round of commercial contract starts. Hmm. Yeah, and you know, I think this is also why there's some interest in like you saw that uh, that whole thing about growing lettuce in space. Mm -hmm. Like you know, if you can kind of grow your yeah. own food up there and you know recycle the water, which is <sighs> I always like. <laughs> Tell people to think about what that means. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the water. And uh -huh. actually, what's great is that astronauts actually prefer the recycled water because mm. it tastes fresher because it comes right out of the machine. Like, it's not sitting around in a bag for six months. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, true. hey, man, we made a machine to make it good again. It works. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, yeah. I like this. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. No, and, you know, it, it's also, you know, lest we forget, you know, the, the, the job here is not just to build a space station and then just kind of sit it, let it sit there. It's to, figure out how to make this work, you know, longer term. Yeah, yeah. And, like, so people have told, talked to me about, like, you know, oh, like, all these problems on the space station, you know, leaking ammonia and all this. Mm. It's like, yeah, but that's kind of the point. Like, yeah. we want to learn what happens if you try to be in space for 15 you years. You want to be What's so far break? away that you can't remedy it. You want to be yeah. close enough that you can deal with it. Right. Ex exactly. Like, so none of, this is, none of this is explicitly, like, Mars training, but it's like, mm -hmm. all right, well, you know, they're learning how to build these giant, you know, life support systems that can last 20 years, hopefully yeah. maybe 30 by the time they shut this thing down. <laughs> and, you know, how to maintain those, what's likely mm -hmm. to break, how do you deal with that? And, you know, how do you handle you know, stuff like debris flying nearby? You know, what are these procedures? Like, you know, they don't have it all figured out because that's what NASA's do. Like, you know, they're yeah. trying to learn how it works. Yeah. So, you know, I think the space station you know, is going to prove really useful for that kind of stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, once they start this talk about bumping up the crew to seven, mm. which will allow a lot more science to get done. And, you know, it's just like it's good times for the space station, I think, in general, you know, despite Absolutely. a couple of uh, visiting vehicles that didn't quite make it. <laughs> yeah. Well, and also, lest we forget, I mean, we're seeing a lot more activity just around the space station in general in terms of number of launches, resupplies. You know, it seems like that's happening every month. Yeah, uh, absolutely. It's really nice. Bring up yeah, some yeah. sake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you, you see the like, the schedule for visiting vehicles, and it's like mm -hmm. it gets it's pretty tight. Like you'll see stuff like you know progress to like progress launches and docks, and then like a day later, Dragon arrives and docks, mm -hmm. and then they're getting rid of progress, and then they gotta rid, gotta get rid of SpaceX so that the Cygnus can arrive. And mm -hmm. you know, in fact, there's gonna be a Cygnus launching on an Atlas V later this year. Interesting. Which is really, really weird. I don't mm -hmm. know, like for some reason I find that super weird. They're like you took this payload, and put it on a different rocket. What are you doing? Because <laughs> uh, I guess they didn't want it. Like you know, they didn't have enough time to uh, mm. remedy the issue with the Antares. They're so like, mm. all right, you know, ULA, can you just launch this for us? <laughs> like, yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Which gets back to the, that earlier point, you know, okay, well, let's try this, see how that works. Yeah, for sure. And so, mm. like, you know, it's always, always a learning process because, you know, there's only been, you know, what is it, on the order of like a couple thousand rocket launches ever in history. True. You, know, you got to... You know, compare that to something like how many flights a day are there today? You know, <laughs> how many flights a day were there in the 30s? You know, we're, we're not there yet. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, something like United has like 3,000 flights in the air at any given moment. It's like, yeah, my I gosh. Some, I heard hey. something crazy. Something like six or seven million people in the air at any given time. Like, that's a, that's a crazy <laughs> statistic. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, again, it just shows how far we've come as a... Um, as a civilization, that we can support all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Just, just the amount of, of stuff in the air. Uh, they had trouble uh, during 9-11 when they started grounding right. planes, running out of spaces to park them. There's so many <laughs> up in the air that oh, uh, 
uh, you know, they they didn't anticipate having that problem. Mm-hmm. And I love looking at the ATC footage of that. Like you oh. see like, the time lapse of like all of a sudden it's like a vacuum pulls all the planes out of the sky. It's like, nope, you're all landing now. <laughs> and they figured it out. Uh, uh, even uh. even just the the contrails uh, mm. from everything apparently had an effect on on the temperature because the oh, temperature wow. rose because the contrails were adding that extra layer of 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 uh, uh, absorption of, wow. of, of the radiant. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, the number I heard was it blocking about one percent of the sun, which is a shocking <laughs> amount when you think <laughs> yeah. about it. Yeah, uh, and crazy. so it's kind of funny because in a way it's almost masking climate change effects. Mm. Uh, but another interesting thing about contrails <laughs> is while you know, in the weeks that followed that, they also uh, I, I heard that they went out and shot a lot of stock photography of nice clear skies. Oh yeah, <laughs> finally, <laughs> the planes aren't riding. Yeah, you don't need to Photoshop this one. <laughs> that makes so much sense. But yeah, cool. Always oh, well, gotta find so a silver lining in all these things. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Cool. That is awesome. All right. Thanks much for that. Yeah. Thank you. Excellent.